Good morning, everybody. Welcome. We're going to go ahead and get started. It's right at the top of the hour. My name is Jennifer Morse, and I am with Madcap Software, and I am so excited that you've all chosen to join me for this next hour, um, which is all about the new release that we just had last week, Madcap Flare 2021 R2. You know, release time is always a fun time around here at Madcap, and this one is no exception. I am so excited about this one and um, have been looking forward to this uh, since we announced this last week. So thank you so much for taking the time today with me. I have so much to cover, so I'm going to jump right in and get started. As always, as you know, we will be recording this presentation. And so if you have to leave early, no problem. We're going to send you a link to this as soon as it's done. Also, reminder, there is a question panel in the GoToWebinar uh, control panel console thing. And so I would encourage you to use that as a place to post questions as we go. We have a lot to cover today, so I hope to get to as many questions as I can at the end. Whatever we don't get to live, we'll follow up with you uh, with an answer. So not to worry there. Uh, please take the time to post your, your questions there. Um, all right. We're going to jump in because why not? We have so much fun stuff to cover today. I'm so excited. So really quick, high level agenda. What are we going to be talking about? Well, if you've been to some of my presentations, you know, I'm not a big PowerPoint girl. We're going to, we're going to show a lot of mechanics. Rubber's going to hit the road, but I do have a, a couple of slides that I need to cover and that I want to cover to kind of talk about what we're doing and why. So today's agenda is just a few high level slides to talk about why learning and development. Why have we developed these features? Features. Why are we continually developing these features in Flare? Um, then I'm going to put PowerPoint away, and I want to start with the end in mind. There are a lot of fun new things that have come out, so I'm going to start with an, uh, a course that I've developed. Uh, in fact, it's a, it's a template project, so it's available to you all as well. But I thought it would be interesting to start with what everything looks like with some of these new gears and options all put together. And you've heard me probably say this a million times before if you've been to any of my presentations. Beauties always in the eye of the beholder when it comes to look and feel. Uh, I'm just using a, just a, I, I created something just from, from one of our template projects to show you, but always know that you have full control over how things look. So what I'm going to show you is just one option. But I am going to start with the output in mind. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that away. And then we're going to go into Flare and we're going to demo some of the mechanics and talk about the new uh, interface elements to support all these new features. Okay, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. And I'm probably going to use up the entire hour to do so. So let's get started. First of all, why learning and development? Why are we putting this effort behind this uh, discipline? Well, it's really about breaking down those silos that often exist within organizations. If you think about it, technical communication can be considered a form of learning. As technical communicators, you all are skilled at helping someone learn about a product, a service offered, or perform a particular task or procedure to do a job, for example. The challenges that technical writers face when creating content, you know, those that use traditional tools like Microsoft Word and InDesign and Google Docs and, and others, where there's so much duplication of content, no options for single sourcing and multi-channel publishing. Well, these are shared challenges that instructional designers and anyone creating any kind of courseware face. Oftentimes, though, technical communication and learning and development departments have been disconnected within organizations. Sometimes we see that. And often it's because the solutions available to those within these respective roles to manage content sometimes makes it hard to collaborate. So in summary, what we want to help, what we want to do is help break down those silos and kind of bridge the gap between the technical communication world and the learning and development world by adding important e-learning features to Flare and by doing so add significant value and benefit to these adjacent but overlapping disciplines. So what kinds of benefits does this bring to technical communicators? What does that mean for those of you who are in technical communications? Well, you can easily leverage your skills into becoming courseware developers. You know, many of you are having to do this within your organization. You're, you're, you might be tasked with doing more with fewer resources. Well, now you can easily reuse your existing content and create interactive courses for both online and print delivery without having to learn entirely new solutions and technology stacks. 
it's a huge improvement in cross-department collaboration between technical writers and maybe the instructional design team and maybe other subject matter experts within your organization. All of the fun features of single source authoring and content reuse still apply here with the added functionality to turn existing content inter in, into interactive learning and development content by adding things like knowledge checks, maybe gradable quizzes at the end, right, where we want to test the learner on what they've just seen or read, for example. And as an e-learning authoring and publishing solution, Flare now generates SCORM versions 1.2 and 2004 and XAPI, sometimes known as TINCAN content. So SCORM, if you've never heard of this uh, acronym, it stands for Shareable Content Object Reference Model. It's a bit of a mouthful. And XAPI is short for Experience API. And these are protocols for tracking learning-related activity. They provide essentially a framework and a structure to pass data and information between content and technologies like learning management systems, sometimes referred to as an LMS, or a learning record store, sometimes referred to as an LRS. So this means your content can be integrated with these platforms to host and deliver all that information. If you need to also track a learner's progress for compliance purposes, whether the learner passes or fails, the score they receive on the gradable test and more. So Flare is not providing the LMS portion of this, we can, we'll still be able to create a standalone course, but if we don't need to track it, I'm going to show you that in a minute. But if we do need to publish it and get it into our learning management system or our uh, learning record store, well, now Flare has the ability to package it up into SCORM and XAPI compliant content to deliver it easily into these other platforms without any extra plugins, without any extra programmatic effort. So by having these features uh, built in, your skill set as a technical writer becomes so much more valuable to the organization as a whole, since now you can repurpose those techcom skills into training content so much more easily now. What about for the benefits for instructional designers, courseware developers? So on the other side, instructional designers, courseware developers now have a solution specifically built for maximizing content re single sourcing to help reduce so much of the content duplication that happens with traditional tool chains available to instructional designers and courseware developers. Using Flare means we've got powerful content management and multi-channel publishing capabilities, including outputting to web and mobile and print, all from a single source. And again, all of those things, as you know, as techcom professionals, all has a positive impact, uh, positive impact and cost-saving effect if this content needs to be translated and localized. Of course, you can easily reuse and leverage uh, content from other sources. We can, of course, as you know, we can import from Word, we can import from FrameMaker and other tools, uh, and, and even repurpose content from other rapid e-learning tools. You can use templates and style sheets when creating and managing content in Flare, so you have full control over formatting and branding of content. Plus, if you're new to Flare, um, then we have pre-built project templates and tutorials to help get you started. So again, we're trying to kind of um, bridge that gap between both of these disciplines because there's so much overlap between the two. So specifically, what features are we adding to Flare to support all of this? So I'm going to break down the things I'm going to cover today, and then I'm going to put PowerPoint away, just like I promised. So we're going to be able to create interactive courses with multiple choice and multiple response type questions directly in Flare's editor. You can create standalone HTML5 output that includes content like knowledge checks and questions like a gradable quiz. You'll be able to assign a passing score after the quiz is complete. Maybe you want to design custom pass and fail pages so when the learner gets to the end of the quiz, they know that they passed, they know that they failed, and they have information about their score. You'll be able to do things like limit the test attempts. How many times can they go back and take that test? And we also have the ability to randomize the answers. Okay, so we don't have to necessarily always show them in the order that they've created them. Flare will randomize those answers. So if we don't need to track for any compliance reasons or report on how people are taking this content or consuming this content, Flare creates these beautiful standalone HTML5 sites with these elements in there. However, if you do need to track the learner's uh, uh, progress and their scores and report on it for compliance reasons, well then of course you'll be able to track this course content with an external LMS or an LRS. And as mentioned, you'll be able to generate uh, zipped packages like XAPI and SCORM packages that can be easily uploaded into your learning management system of choice. And you'll be able to track 
uh, to the quiz score or to course completion. Also, we can't forget about our friends in PDF, right? We can also produce PDF outputs and we can choose now whether we want to include questions that have the answers checked off or not. So imagine you're creating uh, content uh, for instructors, maybe content for students, you're going to deliver it as PDF output. Maybe for the instructors, you choose to have the answers to knowledge checks and quizzes marked correct. So the instructor kind of knows what the correct answer is, almost like an answer key. Maybe you leave them unchecked for the students. So we'll have the option uh, to do that in our PDF targets, and I'll show you that. And then hopefully you can see this. I'm thinking this is kind of down far on the page. Um, but we have new project templates and tutorials to help you get started with these new features quickly. So those are the biggies. Now, I do want to mention there's a couple honorable mentions that I that I would be remiss not to talk about in terms of what was updated in this release. I'm going to focus mostly on these things today. Um, but I also want to mention um, we've added a new iframe element into the insert ribbon. OK, so this is a new interface element that you see. Uh, an iframe is an HTML elephant, uh, ele elephant element that allows you to embed things like documents, videos, interactive media within a page. And by doing this, maybe you want to insert an iframe to display maybe a secondary web page in a flare output. You know, if you want to have this experience, that iframe element allows you to include a piece of content from some other source. Now, you've always had the ability to insert an iframe. Some of you that have been using Flare for a long time might be saying, I've always worked with iframes. Well, you could. There's nothing new about supporting an iframe in Flare, but you had to be comfortable going into the uh, code editor to insert those iframes. Not everybody's comfortable splunking around in there to put those in and specify the source and the height and the width. So we essentially put an easy button into the insert ribbon in Flare in 2021 R2. And I'll show you that. Maybe if you have it open, you'll probably see it there. It's on the far right hand side of the insert ribbon. So now you can easily insert an iframe, specify the source and the size of that right within an easy UI. So again, could always do the iframe, We've just made it easier to insert it if you're not comfortable going into the text editor and, and coding it yourself. Um, for those of you who are doing uh, command line publishing, right? You've, you're programmatically building all of your content using the Mad Build command. We've added some new features that um, some folks have asked for, which is the ability to add usernames and passwords and put those credentials directly into the Mad Build command or within a JSON file. So it lets you override the credentials in your registry. So this is really for those of you doing the command line publishing. I think you'll really uh, enjoy this to have that to have that added flexibility. Finally, the other thing that I want to mention is that in an effort to modernize the language used in our app, you're going to notice the term master is replaced with other terms. So I won't spend too much time on this. In fact, there's a really helpful table that I borrowed from the documentation. But just to kind of give you an idea, there were a few places in Flare where we used the term master. And, and you can see in this table, and, and again, I, I, you don't have to memorize this. This is all documented in, in the online help. But I just wanted to let you know um, that if you, you know, start a new project uh, based on a template, you won't see master page folder anymore. You're going to see template pages where we said, you know, primary or a master page layout that's changed to primary page layout. So you'll see this in various aspects of the interface, um, but I did want to mention this. And so uh, I'm still uh, uh, training my brain to not say master page anymore. We're going to say template page. Um, the file extensions, by the way, have not changed. So nothing about the behind the scenes of the file has changed. It's just you won't see the word master page anymore. It's going to say template page, but it still has the same. I'll just use the template page, for example. It's still an FL. Uh, MSP, I think, is the extension. So not to worry, those things haven't changed at all. All right, as mentioned, I'm going to put PowerPoint away. I'm going to pull up my web browser now, and I'm going to start with the end in mind. I want to show you what some of these elements look like all pulled together in an output, OK? All right, so let me wait for everything to catch up here. All right, so it looks like GoToWebinar has caught up. Please give us a high sign if you can't see my screen. You should see a Flare HTML5 output that says Austin, Texas eLearning course. So what we're looking at here is just a Flare HTML5 output. A couple things you're going to notice. In this course that I've developed, I've chosen to do a few things differently. I've chosen to hide any kind of navigation. You don't see any kind of table of contents 
there's no search because I've structured this course because I want to progressively move people through the content. I don't want to give them the option to necessarily jump around. Now that might be not appropriate for what you do. Maybe you do want to choose to show a, any uh, some element of navigation. So I just chose to go skinless here because as you'll see in a moment, we're going to progressively move through this content. So again, this is one of those beauties in the eye of the beholder things. Just because you don't see a TOC in a search doesn't mean you can't include it in your content. It's just what I'm using here in this template project. So here's our start topic. We're going to go ahead and start this course. So we come to our next page. A couple things you'll notice. This is just a topic with some basic text. The first thing you'll see is this new toolbar element. So this is one of the new elements that we've added. It's called an e-learning toolbar. Okay, and we'll, I'm going to show you what it looks like and where we put this. I actually put this into my template page because I want it to show up in more than one topic. You can put them into an individual topic. I chose to put it into the template page so that it shows up on a collection of topics. So this is how we're progressively moving through. It even has a little progress bar here so we know what page of what we're on as we progressively move through. Now everybody pay attention because there's going to be a quiz at the end. Let's move next. Just standard topic. This is a topic template with two responsive tiles. Looks great in a web browser, but of course, if we shrink it down, these tiles will stack on top of one another. Nobody's going to be using their thumb and their index finger to navigate around on the page. So again, this is just coming from the template. You can use these, you cannot. You can swap them out with your own text, images, video, whatever you want to do, or scrap it completely. We'll go ahead and move next. And we come to one of our first interactive elements here, which is called a knowledge check. So this is a sort of a, a quick little assessment to test the learner on what they just saw, what they just read, et cetera. So we have our first question here. So what is the capital of Texas? Now, you know, if you're, hopefully you know the answer, but we're gonna say, if you were paying attention, the answer is Austin. Now, before I click this submit button, which is also new, I want to point out that my next button down here is grayed out. Notice that I can't progress to the next page. And I'll show you this when we get into Flare. One of the things you can do with these knowledge checks is you can make them required for that navigation to become available. Again, it's just an option. You don't have to stick with that behavior. Maybe you don't want them to be required. In this example, I said, yes, this, these knowledge check, these they're required. We have to answer them and submit it before we move on to the next page. So this submit button's also new. It gives the learner instant feedback, which is really helpful when you're putting in these little assessments. This isn't graded in any capacity. This is just a little knowledge check, essentially. So let's go ahead and click Submit. And it says, correct, the capital of Texas is, is Austin. If we had answered it incorrectly, let's try that we have some different feedback. So this is another new element, which is an incorrect bit of feedback that we can provide the learner if they answer that knowledge check incorrectly. Okay, so now that I've answered it, you notice that my next button becomes enabled. And again, just because it's blue and you have this hover behavior, all of that's customizable. That's just how I've chosen to display it. Let's go ahead and click next. Okay, so just a standard uh, flare topic. We got some hotspot. Here's an image map here. You know, if we click on them, Standard image map hotspot behavior here. We'll move to the next one. Topic with some drop downs. Maybe you want to layer or progressively show information on the page. Here's the information talking about the two big music festivals that are held in Austin. And now we come to our second knowledge check. Again, required for navigation. Notice that my next button is enabled. So Austin, what is it known as? What's its official slogan? Well, the official slogan is the live music capital of the world. And we have some custom text here, right, after we answer it. So that's kind of fun. What music events are held in Austin? Well, if we paid attention. It's Austin City Limits and South by Southwest. So this is a different type of question. This was the two that we were just playing with. That was a single answer question. This one is a multiple choice question, but you can actually answer more than one option here. And we have a little indicator here for the learner that you can select all that apply. The selection box is actually different than the single answer question too, but I think this little text here is kind of helpful because maybe the learner doesn't know that this means you can select more than one. We'll go ahead and click submit and we get our correct feedback. Now I can progress next. So slideshow, this is just an example of how you might present information. So we've always had the slideshow capabilities in Flare. It was available in the insert ribbon. We kind of brought it back for this particular project template. So this might be an option in terms of how you present and show information on a page. Again, the slideshow box and the size and how it looks, all of that's customizable. That's just how we chose to display it here in this particular template project. It's a kind of a fun and different way to present information. 
Uh, text with a video, probably pretty common when we're doing learning content, right? We want to have some information. Maybe we want to have people watch a little tutorial. This is just a link to a YouTube movie. Here's an example of that iframe. Again, you could always insert iframe elements into a flare topic, but as I'm going to show you, there's a new easy button to make this much easier to do if you're not comfortable inserting uh, these iframe elements uh, using the text editor. Now we've gotten to the end of our learning content and we have this page here that says, all right, we're done. Now we're going to present a short quiz to test your knowledge. So this starts the gradable portion of our test for the learner, okay? So let's go ahead and click next. So again, what's the capital of Texas? It's Austin. Now again, these are required questions. Who is the father of Texas? I know it sounds like it should be Stone Cold Steve Austin, but it's not Stephen Austin. Okay, which music festivals are held in Austin? Well, it's Austin City Limits and South by Southwest. In fact, I'm gonna purposely answer this wrong so we can see uh, something fun in the custom pass and fail page here. What's Austin's climate? It's humid subtropical. And what are not the official slogans of Austin? So again, this is a multiple response type question. Well, it's not known as the best barbecue in the world, even though it has amazing barbecue. Not known officially as the Center for Urban Bat Colonies. It's known as the live music capital of the world. So notice I'm at the end of my quiz. That next button has now changed to complete. So the learner knows, hey, we're at the end of the gradable portion. I'm gonna submit my answers. I'll go ahead and set complete. And we get what's called this custom pass page. And a couple things to notice here. This is that gradable um, uh, test score. Now, this is just standalone. This isn't being tracked in any way. This is just for me, the learner, to know what I got on this quiz, what my score was. Everything that you see here, so this is just a topic, everything you see here comes from a new element that I'm going to show you called a test results proxy, which is just a container to display our test results. And because we have a new proxy available, I'm going to show you, we also have a new skin component so that you can customize how all of this looks. I just have a lot of the defaults turned on, including the name, what my score was that I passed, um, if I've got some custom feedback here on an incorrect answer that shows up. All of these little things you see, much of it, all of those little stylistic dials can be edited in the skin component that we've added. Now, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but it's flair and we don't wanna sort of back you into any kind of corner that means you can't customize things. So um, these skin component, the skin components available so you can stylistically you know, adjust what you see here. Okay, so that's kind of what I wanted to start with, which, which is the end in mind. All of these little gears that have come together, right? Learning content, uh, knowledge checks in the form of these little assessments, and then a gradable quiz. So let's take a look at Flare now and have a look at some of the mechanics and some of the new interface elements that we've added to support these new features. Okay, let me go ahead and put this away and I'm going to pull up Flare. All right, so here we are. First of all, I just want to mention, I said there are new templates to get you started, so I would be remiss not to point that out. Uh, some people kind of breeze right past the start page when they open up Flare, but I, I, I kind of want to show you this because it's kind of interesting. When we start a new project, you'll notice there are two new project templates available to you. One is called eLearning, and this just is, uh, it has three HTML targets available to you, and they have content, they have content with knowledge checks, content with quizzes. So again, nothing set in stone in terms of look and feel. Uh, it's just there to get you going, to get familiar with some of the features that we've added. And there's a second project template in the online and print folder called eLearning and PDF. So it's everything that this one has, plus two additional PDF targets configured, one for teachers and one for students that will incorporate that new option to show questions either answered or unanswered when we build our PDF. So again, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, I'll say that a couple times, you can use these as a basis, learn, take what you want, get rid of what you don't, all those fun things. And if you click this link here, we do have a couple additional project templates that we've added to our website and we'll continually add them as we go. In addition to these new uh, project templates, if you go to Flare's online help in the tutorial section, in fact, I brought it up here so we can see, 
Um, let me just show you real quick. Um, if you navigate to Flares Online Help, there is a, a tutorials chapter. There are two new e-learning tutorials to get you familiar with the features. So we broke it out into a basic tutorial in advance. Highly recommend that you walk through these. They're fun. Uh, it's a great way to get familiar with the new features. And then eventually, uh, in the in the near future, we're also developing uh, a class, a training class specifically for uh, e-learning. So look for that uh, soon. I just wanted to point that out so you know that we have something here to get you started with learning these new uh, features. All right, so I'm going to put that away. I've already started a project here so we could talk about some of the mechanics. Um, the, th the next thing I want to talk about, so we talked about the new templates available. Uh, the other thing you'll notice in the interface is a new ribbon called the e-learning ribbon. And what we've done here is we've grouped together a lot of the e-learning functionality here to make it easy. Um, and so you'll have the ability to do multiple choice questions, add feedback, et cetera. In fact, let me open up a topic and we'll take a look at some of these things. So now I've have my topic in focus and some of these buttons now become available to me. So we'll be able to add multiple choice, uh, multiple response type questions. Um, we'll be able to drop in some of those new proxies that we've talked about. There's also in this uh, e-learning ribbon a question properties pane and I'll go ahead and select this here. It's one of these little helper windows that opens up on the right hand side by default and this gives us information about those questions that we drop in. So if I put my focus in this first question here you'll notice a couple things. Each question that we insert has its own ID. This is for tracking purposes. So Flare will automatically create a new ID for you when you drop in a new question, but you also have the ability to manually generate uh, an ID if you need it. A um, couple other things I want to point out. There are some new uh, uh, tags in the editor you'll notice to support this. So I've already inserted a question here and you'll notice a couple uh, tags or containers here. So the first one is this new multiple choice tag. So this tells Flare, hey, this is an actual question type. This is a multiple choice question type. This next one here, this is a new tag. This is the question portion. Okay, so this is our question, this is actually the, the question part, and then each of these represent the actual answers, okay? A um, couple other new tags, and I'm going to show you how to create this in a moment, but I'm just using this in as, as an example. This is a new tag called the correct feedback tag. This is the incorrect tag, and then of course we have that submit button here. What this means by having these new tags is you have full control over how these look in your style sheet, okay? And when we drop in these questions, as you'll see, they kind of act like list items. If I wanted to drop in another option here, I can just hit enter and you can see I get a brand new option. Uh, if I need to add supporting content, you know, underneath just like a, uh, like a regular list item, I can hit enter and then backspace and I can put supporting content in here if I want to. So they act very similar to those uh, list items that we're used to when we're working in Flare. How do we create these? Well, let's come down here to the bottom. I'll show you. Um, we can create quiz questions from existing content or we can drop in uh, quiz questions without any content created. So I'm going to show you a real quick demo of both. So I've got some content in my topic here. I'll just go ahead and highlight. Oops, excuse me. I'll highlight all of this information here. I'm using. <laughs> Let me undo that. Oh, sorry about that. I have all of my markers and everything turned on. I got a little click happy. So with all of my content created, I'm going to come up to my e-learning ribbon and I'm going to make this a multiple response question. So I select my button and all of that content automatically got wrapped in those new tags that I mentioned. To tell Flare the correct answer, we simply click in the box and that's what tells Flare what the correct answer is. So we can change it at any time. Now, because this is a knowledge check question, we wanna give that learner some instant feedback, right? It's not graded in any way. We just wanna test their knowledge and, and kind of see, did they pay attention to what they just read or saw? So I'll use my e-learning ribbon one more time. I'm gonna drop in a submit button. And by dropping in a submit button, I automatically get the feedback that I want to display if they answer it correctly or incorrectly. Okay, I don't have to just, I don't have to enter in the submit button and then go back and add the feedback. It's automatically going to put it in there for me. So I want to get rid of this placeholder text and I'll say something like, this is correct. And we want to give them some information as to what is incorrect. So one thing to point out is maybe you don't want to type that kind of content in 
all the time. So let me get rid of that. In my particular project, we happen to have snippets for these kinds of things. So this is one of those elements of reuse. Maybe you don't want to constantly type those thing in, type those in. Perfect example of how you might choose to use a snippet for something like that. So if I open up my snippets folder, uh, I kept the e-learning snippets in a separate folder just to make it tidy. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. If I want to use my incorrect feedback snippet, I can just drag it in. That way I don't have to type it in every time. We can add some custom information in here if we want. Uh, maybe you want to cross-reference the reader back to another topic if they got it wrong. If you want to point them back to something to give them more information, maybe you insert a, a link to another topic in your project or give them some more text information here. So you don't have to type that in all the time. You might think about using a snippet there. Same thing with the notion of telling the reader that there is more than one answer possible here. You might not want to type in select all that apply every time. So I have a different snippet here called select answers. And if I drag that in, we can see it says select all that apply. Now I can control this from a single place, of course, right? Maybe we need this to say choose all that apply. Well, maybe I've got a hundred types of questions in there. I don't want to do that in a hundred places. I can just update my snippet file and change the text from select all that apply to choose all that apply. And everywhere I've used that little snippet, it will update. Okay, so that's if we have existing content. What if we don't? Let me add in some, uh, let me add a fresh paragraph down here. Hopefully you can see this. If we don't have existing content, we can tell Flare, well, are we gonna drop in a multiple choice or a multiple response type question? Let's practice doing another multiple choice one. I'll just use this button here. And simply by clicking that button, you can see we have a new tag in some placeholder text. So maybe it's a uh, true false question. Maybe I'll change this and I'll say true and I'll hit enter to get another item and I'll say false. Oops, I'll spell it correctly. And I can tell Flare what the correct answer is. And maybe I'll continue to drop in that submit button, okay? And I'll fill in my correct answers, my incorrect feedback, and then of course we've got the submit button. So super easy to create these interactive quizzes from existing content, or we can use that e-learning ribbon to drop in those choices, a multiple choice uh, or multiple response types questions, simply by clicking the little box in here, tells Flare what that correct answer is gonna be. One of the other things I wanna point out, you see I have a marker here, it says this is required. By default, these questions are required for navigation. So that, requirement is actually set in the style sheet. So the, the default behavior is it is required. If you want to change that behavior across the board, you can change that default requirement in the style sheet, or you might want to just do it on a question by question basis. If maybe you want all of them to be required, be required except for maybe one or two, totally up to you and what you're creating. If I have my cursor in here, I can use that question properties pane Maybe I change it here. Maybe I say, no, it's not required for navigation. And we can see that went from, my little marker went from required to optional. So we wouldn't have to answer this question before um, we move to the next page, okay? So that's what that means there. All right, let me go ahead and hit save some of the other things. Let me look at my time. Oh my goodness, it's flying by. Other interface elements to support this. Um, we talked about the new updates to those MADCAP specific tags in the editor. I want to talk a little bit about that new toolbar proxy. So that was that element that we saw that allows us to progressively move through and have that little progress uh, status in every page. I chose to put mine in a template page. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my template page so you can see. Um, and here's how I've designed it. Okay, this is the topic body. This is where the topic content is going to flow. And I inserted the new e-learning toolbar proxy. We can do it a couple ways. We can insert it from the e-learning ribbon. Okay, there it is there. But it's also in the familiar spot, if you are used to this, if you go to the insert ribbon and come all the way over to the right-hand side, we've added those proxies here as well. So you can do it from that new ribbon or you can do it from the insert proxy menu if you're used to going there to insert your proxies. Okay, so let's go back here. There's that new toolbar proxy. I also want to point out, because we have a new proxy there, it also means we have a new skin component if you want to customize how that toolbar looks. You don't have to, but if you want to, then we can add a new skin component and edit. Let me go ahead and edit this so I can show you. I went ahead and pointed to that new skin component. So where is that? Well, let me cancel out of this and let me open up my project organizer here. 
here is that new e-learning skin component that I added. I won't go through all these things because again, this is where you can turn all of the little stylistic dials. There's a lot of options you can turn here. Uh, you can use the highlight button to select multiple bits so you can control things really easily, but there's a lot of style groupings here if we wanna customize the look and feel of this, including the hover behavior, the image, the text, um, you know, the inner progress bar, the outer progress bar, the colors, all those little stylistic elements can be changed here. We can even use the UI text if we want to change some of the text within those buttons. Great for translation as well. Very beneficial. Okay, so the new e-learning toolbar plus a new skin component if we want to customize um, the elements of how that looks. The other thing was that if you remember when we got to the end of the quiz, I came to that custom pass page, which was it, it gave me some information that, you know, thumbs up, it had an image. Well, what I did is let me go ahead and open that page up. So it's just a topic. And there's that text. There's the image. This is another new proxy that we added, which is called the test results proxy. This is the container that's going to display the learner's answers. And again, like that toolbar component, if you, you don't have to do this, you, you can just get a, a use the default out of the box one if you want. But if you want to customize how and, and what's displayed in those test results, well, we have a second skin component to allow you to use that in the proxy. And that's called the test results skin component. So if I right click and edit the proxy that I've added, you'll see I've added that test results skin component here. So let me open that up and show you. Kind of similar to other skin components. Um, there are some additional setup options that we have in terms of how much do we want to show on that page? Do we want to show whether the learner passed or failed? Do we want to show the score? And we have some choices. Do we want to show the percentage correct? Like you got 80% correct or the total correct, like eight of 10 or however many questions that you're presenting to them. So you have some choices choices there. And then how much of the questions and answers do you want to show the learner? So again, some of those options are available to you here. And then from the styles page, you can control many little elements, right, about how that page looks. Um, you know, again, you might not be using all of these things, but if you want to change, you know, the border and the green color and the font, this is just a kind of a preview to show you everything. I don't have time to go through every option here, but as you can see, you can get super creative in terms of how these elements look, what you show, what you don't, et cetera. Same thing, UI text. You can even um, change the uh, elements here using the UI text page. Um, maybe you want to put a custom title uh, about the course that shows up. You can do that here in that test results proxy. Okay, so two new proxies and two new skin components to customize how that information looks. Okay. Again, you don't have to do that. You'll get a, you can just do a quiz at the end and get just sort of a generic results page, but if you want to customize it, uh, you can. Now, speaking of the gradable quiz, remember we walked through, we got that score at the end. There's another element in our project to support that portion that's graded. And that comes in the form of a test node, which we include in our table of contents. Anytime you have a course that includes a gradable test, then a test node needs to be enabled or active in your table of contents. And the topics with those quiz questions will be nested underneath. So if I open this here, I already did this. I created a, a book and I turned this into a test node. And I just dragged in those topics with those individual questions in there. Now in this project, I have one question per topic. You might choose to have multiple questions per topic. That's up to you. The way we turn an element into a test node, you can do it a few different ways. You can use the TOC editor toolbar by having a book or a page selected. And by selecting this option, that'll turn it into a test node. Uh, we can use the e-learning ribbon. That's another option. So we have our book or our page selected and we can turn it in to a test node. Uh, I believe we can use our friend the right-click menu. Okay, and we can turn it into a test node here as well. Uh, so lots of ways to do it. And like any book or page in our table of contents, we can bring up the properties of it. Now this is already turned into a node, so the test options properties will come up. So in fact, you'll see this. Any uh, anytime you bring up the properties or a book uh, uh, of a book or a page in your TOC, you'll see a new e-learning tab in there. This one's already turned into a test node, so you can see it's enabled. But this is, I think, the last way you can turn a book or a page into a test node. Simply bring up the properties of it, go to the e-learning tab, and check this box here. That's the other way you can turn it in to a test node. 
Okay, so this is an important piece for the graded portion. And we have some choices, of course. What kinds of things can we do? Well, we can randomize the test answers, as you can see. So we'll, we might wanna select this if we wanna change the order of answer options each time a test is loaded. If it's not selected, the order of answers displays in the same order as we arrange them in the topics. Okay, so that's totally up to you. We can also limit test retries. We can say how many times a learner can attempt to take that test. So if they try to start the test after the maximum number of allowed attempts is a set, well, then the latest test results will display with a little message. If it's not selected, then the number of retries allowed is unlimited. Okay, so that's totally up to you whether you wanna limit those retries or not. Uh, we can assign a passing score here if we want to. What, uh, what's the minimum percent of questions the learner has to answer correctly in order to see a success message in the test results page? And, and the score is actually based on the number of correct answers out of the total number of questions in that test note. The default is set to 75%, but of course you can change that if you want. And here's where you can link to those custom pass or fail pages. Again, you don't have to do this. I went ahead and as you saw, I designed a custom pass page. I also have a custom fail page. Both of those include that test results proxy, which will fill in the test results into that topic. So here in the node, I can link to my custom pass page and my custom fail page here. So these are just topics. If I go ahead and select this, you can see I can just choose the topic that I want to be the custom pass page or the fail page, which has that new test results proxy container in it. Okay, so that's how that gear comes together. Um, all right, so that's an important piece of it. Now, again, the, the other piece is we want to actually generate something. So I want to I turn our attention to the HTML5 target options because many of these things are great if we're just producing a standalone HTML5 quiz, nothing that necessarily that needs to be tracked in any kind of LMS. But what if you need to do that? Well, there's some new options in the target that allow us to do it. So let me go ahead and open up the target. Uh, do I have it open here? I thought I did. Here, let me open up my target file. In our HTML5 target file, there's a new tab called the e-learning tab. So you'll see this here. And this is where um, we can generate those packages and then we can create our SCORM or our XAPI, XAPI compliant output if we're going to be uploading it to our LMS. So this is where we tell Flare what standard we're going to generate. So you don't have to do this, but if you want to generate that package, well, then you're going to want to choose your standard here. You have some options. What do you want to name the package? Um, optionally, you can throw in that course description and ID. And from a tracking standpoint, we have some choices too. Uh, depending on what we want to do, we can use the test result or we can use course completion. So you might choose to use the test result if you're going to be producing a, um, a maybe a, a, a gradable quiz um, or something with, um, you know, maybe a combination course that includes a quiz uh, and a knowledge check. Maybe you want to choose the test results. You also have the option to use course completion. You might choose this if it's just, you know, maybe you're just producing content in some of those assessments. Um, so with, if you choose this option here, we'll choose the course completion. We have a little percentage box that shows up. Um, and, and the purpose of this is to um, enter the percentage of the course that the learner has to complete in order for us to, to show that um, for the tracking to happen, okay, for the LMS. So that tracking is gonna collect data that the LMS uses to determine how effective the course is or how effective the learning efforts are. So again, this is not a requirement, but if you need to do that for the purposes of your learning management system or LRS, this is where we can package it up. And if we choose to do that, when we build our HTML5 output, let me go ahead and open this up here and I'll show you. When we build our output, of course, this is just standard HTML5. This opens up that course that we just made. You'll notice there's a new folder in here called LMS package. And if I open this, let me drag this over. So the name of the zip file is what I gave it the name here. And this is what I would upload to my learning management system. So most learning management systems give you the ability to upload a zip of either SCORM or XAPI content. And this is where you will browse and locate that content if you need to deliver it and track all of that uh, uh, behavior there in the learning management system. 
All right, let me put this away. A couple other things I want to mention as well. Um, we talked about PDF. I, I need to bring up our friend the PDF targets here and show you. If you're producing uh, uh, print-based manuals, um, we actually have some new options there. So I'm going to go ahead and open up. I'll open up the teacher one. In this particular template project, we're producing two coming from the same source, um, but we have some different choices in the one for teachers versus students. Let me open up the teacher target here and I'll show you what I mean. In the advanced tab, there is a new option here to show correct answers for those e-learning questions. So for the teacher version of the PDF, we have this option checked. When we build our PDF, and I'll go ahead and build it here, and we'll take a look. So just take a second. Let me open it up. Oop, and it went onto my other screen. Let me drag it over. When we navigate to those questions here, I'll go ahead into this first knowledge check. Oop, I forgot to answer, put that in here. I think I put in an item and I didn't put in an answer. This is actually going to show the correct answer because we said, hey, check off. I want the instructor to know what the correct answer is. Okay, same thing here. We can see the correct answers filled in. And each test node, if I open this up here, each question will have the answer filled in. The student one's gonna look at the same, except we've done a little single sourcing here where you know some things might be specific for the students, some things might be specific for the instructor. But the biggest thing is for that student PDF, we unchecked that box. So when you come to those knowledge checks and those uh, quiz questions, you're not gonna see an answer or, or a circle or a box filled in. It's gonna be there for the student to either fill in themselves or think about what the answer is going to be. So a couple options there to support print-based deliverables of our training content. I wanted to mention, we talked about that iframe, and I just want to show you quickly where in that uh, ribbon we've inserted it. So if I come to that insert ribbon here, and I'll go ahead and open up my topic there that has an iframe just for reference. If you pop up to the insert ribbon here on the very far right hand side of the interface or the ribbon in the advanced section, here is that new insert iframe button. Okay, and when we select it, now we have a little bit of UI here to easily insert the source of the iframe content and specify the size of it here. So we don't have to do it in the text editor anymore. We have some easy UI to do that. And you can see, I already have, this is that iframe uh, that we had in, in our output. So this one's already inserted. And if I edit this, you can see we've put in the source of the iframe and then the length um, and the width and the height and the size of it is all displayed here using this, um, nice little bit of UI. We don't have to do it in the text editor anymore. So if you want to use those, insert iframe, much easier way to do it if you're more comfortable doing it that way. Um, okay, so let me look at my notes just to make sure. I know we covered a lot of ground today, a lot of new features that we've added. I hope, you know, I hope that you're seeing this and thinking, gosh, this is kind of fun. You know, who, who these, these kind of are new fun features, right? We haven't had anything like this before in Flare. All of the fun content reuse and single sourcing options apply with a really easy way now to include this, these interactive um, elements. So let me just take a look at my notes. I want to make sure I didn't forget any features that I wanted to talk about. I think I covered most of them here. Um, I would, again, I want to remind you too that play with some of these features if you have 2021 R2 installed. Um, I highly recommend that you go through the tutorials that we added into the documentation. Play with some of the template projects just in a sandbox environment. It's a really fun way to get familiar with the new features so you can start thinking about how you might incorporate them into your existing workflow, into your existing content, and maybe collaborate with the training teams within your organization uh, and work a little bit better with them if that's something that you need to do. Um, okay, let me go ahead and pause just for a moment. I'm looking at my time. We've got about 10 minutes left. And let me go ahead and bring up, I do want to mention a couple other things. I think we've got some questions that have come in that we want to get to. Yes, we do. Um, okay, I'm going to pull up PowerPoint. And like I said, I, I promised I wasn't a big PowerPoint person. So hopefully I lived up to my promise there. But I do want to mention before we get to some of the questions, I want to make an announcement about Mad World. So you might have seen this uh, in some communication you've received today um, for some, you know, if you've registered or if you're a speaker, but just to kind of let everybody know after some, some really long discussions and after a lot of thought with everything kind of going on in the world right now, um, the, the Mad World uh, planning team uh, has decided to um, reschedule Mad World for June 12th to the 15th in 2022. It will be in Austin. So this was not a decision that 
that was taken lightly. This was something that was, you know, very well thought out. And I think in an, with everything going on in the world, I think health and safety for staff and attendees and speakers is so important. Um, and so we're um, going to push this out a little bit. Um, still will be in the same place, but it'll be June 12th through the 15th uh, next year. Uh, in Austin. So I did want to mention that. Um, little mention here, I just want to mention a promotion that we're running through August 31st. If you're looking to acquire licenses of Flair, um, it's we have a buy three, get one free promotion. So for every three licenses of Flair, uh, Madcap Central subscriptions or Madcap AMS subscriptions purchased, you will get a fourth license free. So contact your sales rep or the sales team, sales at madcapsoftware.com. If you have any questions about this promotion, or if you want to see how you can take advantage of it, um, then please reach out to us. We would love to help you out there. All right, let me turn my attention a little bit here. And it looks like we've got some questions that have come in. And so I want to do my best to get to what we can here in our last little bit of time. Let me just go ahead and move this over. All right. Oh, my goodness. Big group today. Lots of fun questions. Um, So here's a really good question, and I'm also trying to kind of group things that I'm seeing kind of in, in duplicate here to kind of um, to help. So a, a question came in with integrating with other rapid uh, e-learning tools like Articulate. So will Flare integrate with Articulate 360's offerings such as Storyline and Rise? Um, so if you have that kind of content and you want to integrate it into these new outputs, um, you can actually embed them within Flare's HTML5 output. You can depending on what they output, you can insert them as a multimedia file. You might choose to use the new iframe, insert iframe element and display them within an iframe that way. Um, so either way, or you can link to the output. If it's some, if maybe you're posting those movies on another website somewhere, you can link to them that way. So a couple different ways to integrate that content, um, you, you know, insert it as a multimedia file. We can embed it using an iframe or link to them uh, externally. Um, so let me look at some other questions here. Um, so here's an interesting question. Does the SCORM output support embedded MP4 files? Um, yes, you can embed MP4 files in your SCORM output. OK, so the, the SCORM output, though, you need to upload the whole package to your LMS or the LRS for tracking purposes, right? So if we're going to be using the LMS or the LRS as our delivery engine, everything needs to get packaged up and descent to the LMS or to the LRS. So here's a great question. Can you develop unique feedback for each incorrect response? Absolutely. We give you a little placeholder text when you insert the uh, instant feedback tags, the correct and the incorrect tags. So you just kind of get some basic text in there. Um, you can use a snippet if you're going to be using the same thing over and over again. And you saw how I did it. I, I actually dropped in an inline snippet. Um, for correct and incorrect. And then if you want to, outside of that inline snippet, you might want to add some, some custom text or maybe you skip it all together and you just might want to choose to type in some, um, some specific correct or incorrect feedback. But yes, autom absolutely. It can be, you know, snippet content, which, you know, if it's going to be the same across the board, that makes a lot of sense. Or it can be custom text that you add. Um, okay, let me look at some more questions that are coming in. Um, actually, here's a really good one. I'll go ahead and, and I see a couple this asked a couple different times in a couple different ways. So I'll go ahead and throw that out there. Are there any plans for additional question types, like a fill in the blank or a matching or sorting? Uh, Yes, actually, you know, even though we just released this last week, guess what? We are busy bees over here at Madcap Software. We're already thinking about what's next for all of this. And so we're looking at additional question types that we can support. So absolutely, uh, we'll, we'll see additional updates to these features in the near future, which hopefully will include additional question types like that. I think that would be so useful and cool. So look for more of that in the future. Great question. Okay, let me take a look at some others here in our last little bit. 
So we a couple questions came up about that passing score. Is the passing is the passing score set to 75% as a default in general, or because it's part of the e-learning template project? Um, so that is actually the default for that template project that I was showing you, and for new test nodes that you add. That's just the default that we went to go to go with. You don't have to keep it at 75%, but that's the default number that we put in there. So totally up to you if you want to change that. Um, okay, let me take a look at some other questions here. Uh, I'm just trying to, I know we have a lot have come in and we only have a few minutes left, so I'm trying to do my best to find a couple that have, that are sort of um, um, uh, common. So here's a, a question. So we use Zendesk, we use the Zendesk plugin to publish our content to our support site. Are these new e-learning features compatible with Zendesk? Um, you know, that's a really good question. I, I actually haven't tested that. Um, my, my gut feeling, because, you know, Zendesk is actually the presentation layer for some of this stuff. That might be something that you test. Obviously, there's no tracking in there, so I'm not exactly sure. Um, but it's it's possible that because we can publish HTML5 to Zendesk, maybe those interactive elements could be supported. It's I'll be totally honest. I didn't actually test that, so I don't know the answer 100%. Um, but get back to you on that and see if that's something that's supported. Um, okay, looking at a couple more here that have come in that I want to get to. I'm trying to find those ones that are <laughs> repetitive. Um, so here, um, a question came in, um, e-learning uses a lot of imagery. Any access to image libraries with this release? So I think maybe the question here is, you know, external, um, like maybe open source or royalty-free type of Im imagery. At this time, we don't, but that doesn't mean if you have your own library of images that you want to use or um, stock images that you want to use, certainly you can do that. Um, it might be something that we look at in the future, but for this release, we don't have sort of a stock um, image library except for those images and multimedia files that come with some of the template projects. Okay, looking at my time, I think I have time for about one more here. Um, let me just keep going here. Um, we talked about the additional questions. I see a lot of questions coming in about new question types, additional question types. Yes, absolutely. Um, so a question came in, if my company uses this for onboarding for new employees but doesn't plan to use an LMS or a tracking tool, how does the training need to be set up so that multiple users can use it from the same server without seeing the previous person's answer? So that that's actually going to be, no one's, the one user's answers is, is not ever going to be seen by another learner or, or user when we're viewing it as HTML5. When we're using HTML5 output and we're putting in those gradable questions, that custom pass fail page that we see at the end is specific to that individual learner. Nobody else will see it. And the 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 content or, or my score, if I took the, the course, wouldn't be you know viewed or seen by anybody else. So those paths won't cross um, at all when we're when we're viewing it as a standalone HTML5 site. Um, if we're viewing it in our learning management system or in LRS. Um, then again, it's going to be specific to that particular learner. So those paths will not cross. All right, I'm looking at my time. I want to be respectful of all of yours as well. We're right at the top of the hour. Um, I'm going to keep this open for a little bit. We won't have time to get to some of these um, other questions that have come in here in the last minute. It, but keep them coming because we'll follow up with you um, um, as, as soon as we can and get everything rendered. Um, oh, a couple other questions came in before I wrap because I think this is really important. A few have asked about accessibility and responsiveness. Um, I'll kind of combine a couple here together. Is the output fully accessible with screen readers? 
And the answer is yes, because Flare produces that accessible HTML5 output. Those uh, courses that you develop out of Flare, the HTML5 out of Flare, Flare is 508 compliant and fully accessible uh, and available to those who have those visual impairments that might need to use a screen reader. And you can design them with complete responsiveness in mind. Right, so all of those things apply when we're using Flare, like responsive layouts. So if we're accessing the course on a phone or a tablet, guess what? It's going to look great. All of those responsive tiles will stack and respond appropriately to those smaller screen sizes. All right, well, everybody, we covered a lot of ground today. I hope you're as excited as I am with these new features. These are so fun. It's a little different than what we've always done in the past. And this was really an update that, that has so many fun new features that you'll have um, available to you now to learn and play and experiment with. Um, I, I was so excited about this release. You know, just when you thought you got everything down, all these fun new things come to keep you on your toes. Uh, who knew that content development could be so fun with some of these interactive courses? So I hope you'll enjoy playing and tinkering with some of these new features. And this is really the start of a lot of fun things to come to support learning development. We are not stopping here, believe me. So we're already thinking about what's new, what's next. Uh, and so keep an eye, keep your eyes peeled for some of those things. As always, we want to hear from you. Send us your feedback. How are you going to be using some of these new features? Drop us a line. We want to know. Do you have ideas? Already got some great ideas here in some of these questions. Any ideas for future developments that you'd like to see? We would love to hear from you. And as always, you know we're here. So I want to thank everybody for joining me today. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this presentation and get inspired to tinker and learn and play with some of these things. Uh, I'm so honored that you chose to spend this hour with me. Like I said, we did record it. We're going to be sending a link to the recording to everybody when we're done and following up with some questions that we didn't get to answer live. So thanks everyone. So appreciate your time. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. Hope to see you on another presentation, which we will repeat by the way, um, and I forgot to mention before everybody drops off, we're gonna be having this uh, presentation again towards the end of August. I believe it's gonna be August 25th. That's on our website now. So if you wanna watch it again, we'll be presenting this again live at the end of August. So want to join there as well, please do. So thanks everybody. Hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. Hope to see you on another presentation soon and take care.